My name is Kwanya Huff. I'm the president of the Scottish Museum Federation. If you can't tell by my lovely accent, I come from the South, but that's the South of Texas. Um, <laughs> and we're just so glad to have you here. This year's theme is seeing the bigger picture. And that really was because we wanted to talk about all the different things going on in Scotland and didn't really want to like kind of confine to one topic. So there's a lot about how are you taking your collections, public engagement, how are you working with the community and all these type of things and just really want to see like showcase what are you, everyone doing in the best of the best. So we are going to start today by just um, hearing a little bit about where we are, the stadium, the museum from Alex. Andy, Andy I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. From Andy, who can give you like a brief overview. And then after that, we're going to have session B in the main hall here. And session A is going to be in the Hall of Fame. And we'll break up at that point. Here we go. That's great. So thank you very much. Um, I've been called much worse than Alex, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, my name is Andy Kerr. I'm the Visitor Attraction Manager here at the Scottish Football Museum based at Hamden Park. And I too am from the south of Scotland. So a little bit different, but uh, let me just tell you a wee bit about the history of Hamden Park, which is a uh, long and very storied indeed. So Hamden Park has been here on this site since the year 1903. Prior to this, there were two other stadiums with the name of Hamden Park. The very first one, in fact, did anyone get the train from Glasgow Central to Mount Florida? Um, between Cross Hill and um, Mount Florida Railway Station, you've actually been right through the heart of the very first Hamden Park. The site of the railway beside Hamden Bowling Club was the world's first ever purpose-built football stadium, and that was there until 1884 when the Caledonian Railway Company very selfishly decided that they would like to have the land for some railway. So at that point, Queen's Park Football Club, who had built the first Hamden Park, upped sticks and moved to the second Hamden Park directly north of here. If anyone's ever heard of Cathkin Park before, Cathkin Park, when it was built in 1884, was the second Hamden Park, and that was the national stadium until 1903. The problem with the second Hamden was simply a matter of capacity and that uh, football had grown exponentially in popularity in the 1880s and 90s and thus we needed a much bigger stadium. To the point where in 1899, Queen's Park at the AGM decided to build the largest football stadium in the world and brush it off as if it was simply just another matter. This stadium was opened in 1903 on the 31st of October when Queen's Park defeated Celtic 1-0. Real Halloween scare for the hoops there. But... It was the largest stadium in the world until 1950, when Brazil had the sheer audacity to outdo us and construct the Estadio Maracana. Um, apologies to anyone of Brazilian extraction today, but uh, we think it serves Brazil right for outdoing us and then losing the World Cup final to the unfancied Uruguayan team in 1950. Not that we're bitter about it or anything. The largest crowd we ever had here came in 1937 for a Scotland versus England match. Uh, the largest ever crowd officially that day, 149,415, which was a world record, now remains a European record, although given the uh, admission practices of those days, uh, we can probably say there were a few more people than that. How many exactly? We're not sure, just a guesstimate. The modern stadium, as you see it just now, was rebuilt in two phases over the course of the 1990s, with the east and north stands being rebuilt in the early part of the decade, and the west and the south stand that we're in just now being rebuilt in the late 90s, finished in 1999, just in time for the new millennium. But this now brings me on to us at the Scottish Football Museum. We have been here since the year 2001, and we are a fully accredited museum. Demi made sure I got that in there, so that's us sorted. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, we have been um, educating and uh, entertaining people on the long and varied history of Scottish football, all its weird quirks and uh, all that come with that. And of course, our stadium tours as well. Uh, some of you will hopefully get to go on some tours with uh, myself and uh, my colleague Richard McBrearty. And yeah. I think that more or less covers where we are today. Um, I hope that you all have a, a very good, entertaining and enjoyable day of networking with people. And if you do have any questions about the history of the museum or the stadium, my colleagues and I are more than happy to help and answer however that may be. Thank you.